Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Uh, today we're working on a piece of crap caravan, town and country. 2007 with a 3.8 liter V6. I say piece of crap because I drove this thing and it's falling apart. Um, anyway, what we're dealing with is a misfire. It has had a recent coil plugs and wires put in it and it's still setting i don't know if it's i should say still setting but we're setting a cylinder number three misfire fault coat uh, i drove it it drives fine no misfires at all but i feel an idle misfire so uh the next thing that i did and this i haven't done much yet but uh, just some preliminary stuff before i turn the cameras on i just did a real quick cranking compression sound test and i want to let you guys hear that so let's let's do that together Okay, pedal to the floor, just doing a uh, clear flood mode crank. Uh, you know what? Initially, it sounded good, but then did you hear it? Did you hear it change? Do that again. Oh, our battery's weak on this thing too. Might have to get jump pack here in a minute. All right, um, my suspicions, I'm just gonna tell you guys up front my suspicions on this. Even though the cranking compression sounded okay initially, um, I'm worried about a valve problem. I don't think it's injector related given how well it runs and I don't feel a misfire unless I am uh, at idle and that's pretty typical of a of an upper end engine problem so let's just do a real basic vacuum gauge test and see if we got a needle flutter and uh and then we'll go from there i mean there's i'm just looking at this now there's some external coolant leaks um this thing's beat this thing's beat just going to a central location which would be this right here Needle's pretty steady. Doesn't mean we don't have a valve problem. Intake valve, most likely not. I could be completely wrong in my assumptions here. Um, just by the way it drove, and the way that I can only feel it missing that idle has me thinking mechanical. Um, let's do a quick RPM job. It was cylinder three. I'm not sure what my layout here is. Let me look at these cylinder heads real quick. Okay, the back cylinder head is furthest forward so it's going to be the middle cylinder so 135 should be in the back 246 up front it should be so it's going to be one of these back three I'm just going to do a quick uh, cylinder drop test that one no change on this one and that would be companion cylinder should be six yep three six so that's number three right there should be the middle cylinder yes it is middle cylinder cylinder three so the scan tool was right in showing us uh, which cylinders misfiring. Uh, would it be of any value to look at fuel trim? Could be, give us direction. I don't know that I necessarily need to do that. You know, we still have, could have the potential for an injector issue and I gotta be careful in what I'm doing. I think we'll do the 
the relative compression cranking test next and see what that shows and maybe pressure transducer in the intake pressure transducer maybe in the exhaust I don't know if I have the right pieces to do that though we'll see all right guys I'm not syncing up this scan tool because we're not going to be using it just let you guys see this these trim numbers real quick my short term looks good long term is at four percent so um just not that that really helps me but i don't think that this is an injector problem if this is an injector problem i would expect to see much more positive fuel trim numbers that's really about it with that but face but face butt face okay I'm using my high amp probe Six hundred amp current clamp. Time base. Let's get this on a twenty second time base. Cause I heard some variations. Battery positive. We'll go battery negative. All right. Uh, let's reset this buffer. Kind of sucks working in the sun. I should set up my sunshade. Go ahead and crank that, Pete. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. Go ahead and start that up. We'll let the battery charge back up. I'm going to get one more piece in here for a sink, and then I'll do that one more time. Can you stick around for like two seconds? Okay. Um, we're definitely getting some intermittents here um, and, and it's it's absolutely a compression problem you can see it right every fifth one you see this drop here uh, but uh, what I want to do is get a trigger in here so this is a way spark system and we'll just use a capacitive pickup over a plug wire and I'll use cylinder six, the companion of cylinder three, because of compression pressures, should be consistent in six, and they might not be in three, and that could give me an issue. All right, so what I like to do, guys, is I like to um, uh, set this up with the car running. You see my patterns inverted. Um, so what I want to do is flip that guy around um, and I can do that using a different probe. So my um, secondary ignition, we can invert that. And uh, there's your waveform. We can trigger off of that too. And we'll trigger off channel B. And then we should have a high-low pattern here. If I take a little bit more time, Yeah, compression exhaust, compression exhaust. That's what you're looking at right there. All right, so that should be a pretty decent setup now. Now what I'll do is go back to our 20 second crank period. Um, I'll keep my sample rate. I'm gonna turn it up actually a little bit more just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And uh, go ahead, shut that off, Pete. And uh, go ahead and crank it. Keep cranking. Keep cranking, buddy. Okay. You can start that back up. We'll let it charge up. Go back a screen and we'll analyze that. You definitely have a compression issue. Pete, don't go anywhere. You need to look at this. All right, so um, it actually, compression-wise, it initially looks good. Right? right so I don't know if you can see that each yeah. one of the humps actually are representing um, cylinder compression but then as we crank it you see the difference in the compression pressures here with this one so it's companion this is cylinder three cylinder three has the low spike um, that's the one that's set in the misfire something's going on mechanically with this engine uh, I don't know 
uh, why it would be intermittent like that. See how it's consistent, mm -hmm. like that 720, so I'm looking between my here and here. It's consistent there, but then if you go back like to say this 720, you see cylinder three's got low compression. Right. So that's gonna be like uh, a valve, a uh, lifter, um, I don't think it'd be a valve issue because a valve, if it was cracked or whatever, would be there all the time, right? right. So this has um, this has some kind of lifter problem, I believe. Okay, it's mechanical, uh, and this thing is beat. So what do you what do you want to do with this? Like what what's what's this guy's plan? It needs engine work. Right, I have to tell him. Um, and it's absolutely consistent with the number three cylinder. 160,000 miles too. So. And it, it's also, it doesn't sound really well either. All right, guys, so I was rushing through that with Pete. Let's look at this a little bit better together. Um, I should have actually increased my scales here to a, um, a little bit higher than 200 amps because some of these peaks are getting cut off, but that's not our concern. With our system here, um, it being a waste spark, um, what we're looking at here is is uh, a high, low, high, low pattern. When the uh, red spike is high, that's the number six cylinder on compression. And when the red spike is low, which is here, ignore these low, these bottom ones. This is a coil pack, so we're getting some feedback from the other ones. But um, this low spike is my number three on compression, which is the number six on exhaust. So the just look at the upward spikes here. Uh, this one is compression, number six cylinder on compression, six, number six cylinder exhaust. Number six compression, number six exhaust, okay? And when number six is on its exhaust stroke, which is why the line is lower, uh, number three is on compression, and that's what we use as a sink to synchronize this waveform. And uh, you can see here that this particular 720 degrees of crank rotation, that'd be between here and here, uh, we have, it looks pretty decent. In fact, we'll look at a few more of those. When we initially cranked it, this is what I did before I turned the camera on. I cranked it over and I said, hmm, it's not a compression problem, because it sounded good. But then as we cranked it, when I turned the camera on, I said, wait a minute, that sounds a little bit funny. And we were right it definitely was funny and you see this um low one here you see how the next one after the low one the spike is actually higher ignore that guys that's a result of the low compression before that cylinder so i don't care that we're chopping off that one but you can see consistently we're low on the number three in this area and uh and then it starts working again. So my my guess is is something with the uh, with the valve, the the lifter, the uh, rocker, something along those lines. It's not a valve sealing issue. I don't see a need to put a transducer in the intake or put a transducer in the exhaust. I don't think that would actually help me identify the problem any more than where we are, which is this is an upper engine problem, and. Uh, you know, I, I think the next step would be pull the valve cover off, take a look, uh, but it's in the back and I'm not doing that. So I'm just gonna end this one here. Um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit antsy about that, not antsy, I'm just I'm thinking, is there anything else I can show you? Um, and I, I just really don't think that there is. I don't have the right adapters for my WPS 500, my pressure transducer, to go into the exhaust anyway. And I've never used this tool for that, so I don't feel like experimenting with that. Uh, putting the WPS in the intake manifold, again, um, if we had a valve problem, it would be consistent. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it being a, a valve um, how do I want to say that? A valve sealing issue. It is a valve issue, but not a valve sealing issue. Intermittent low compression. It's got to be a lifter that's messing up. That's my guess. And um, that's it. I'm not sticking around for the repair. That's not what I do. If I was in the field, my next step would be 
um, see how much this guy wants to spend on this car. This thing is driving it. There's clunks and rattles and banging everywhere. When I hit the brake, uh, the entire car shakes, including the brake pedal. It pulses. It's really bad. It needs some needs some pretty decent work. 160,000 miles. Would you do engine work to this? Would you take it apart? Just don't know that I would. So compression problem in the number three cylinder and what we know here guys is spark plugs are not going to fix it. Spark plug wires, coil, injector, none of that is an issue. It's an engine mechanical problem. Uh, the rest of this would be what's the customer want to do. We want to start by maybe pulling the valve cover and taking a look. Might be the way to go. But again, this vehicle needing a lot of work here. Um, I'm not sure they're going to do anything with it. So cool. Uh, I hope you like that. Short and sweet. Compression test using the Pico, synchronizing it with a ignition pattern. This is a waste spark system. For more on this, guys, if you want more training on what I'm doing here uh, and additional stuff, go to my website. It's scannerdanner.com. I have a forum that you guys can be part of. And I also have, more importantly, a paid YouTube channel. I know, a paid YouTube channel. Yeah, it's a paid YouTube channel bringing you into my classroom at Rosedale Technical College where I've recorded my entire class and it is available for you guys online on YouTube called Scanner Danner Premium. You can click on this little icon right here. It'll take you right there and that'll get you even more up to speed with where you need to be with this kind of stuff. Thanks again for joining me, guys. I'll see you next time.